how to build modular terrain boards. This is a question that's been plaguing my mind for centuries and one that I think I've finally found a good answer for today. In 2019, I was getting back into miniatures hard and I spent quite a lot of money on a Kickstarter called Dungeons and Lasers. One year later, they shipped me this massive box full of plastic intended to be used for modular dungeon builds for games like Dungeons & Dragons. Unfortunately, this was so much plastic that it was kind of overwhelming. I kept over planning it, trying to figure out the right way to use it, and this stuff just ended up sitting on my shelf for months. This all changed recently when I was re-watching Black Magic Craft, and I saw one of Jeremy's videos where he attempts to create a giant city build using kits from this very same company. Jeremy's build was cut short due to the kits having some missing parts, and he still hasn't made a follow-up video for some reason. I sure hope he's doing okay. Shame. 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 So I thought I would help to motivate him by making my very own modular city board using these parts before he has a chance to finish his. Like Jeremy, I decided to throw myself headlong into the process and at the very least get all of the parts off their sprues so I could see what parts I had to work with. His advice to just rip these things off their sprues instead of using sprue cutters saved me a ton of time, so I'm glad he mentioned that. I spent an entire day, about 8 hours total working on this task, ripping everything off the sprues and sorting them into piles. One of the cool things about this system of terrain is that you don't need glue to put it together. It works kind of like Lego in that you can put it together in a lot of different ways. It just snaps together and every single part is interchangeable. So as I spent the next many hours ripping these parts off their sprues, I felt inspired by my love of Lego modular buildings, which can be combined and recombined in different ways. And I decided to do the very same thing, but for Warhammer, a Warhammer modular city system kind of like the Zone Mortalis system that Leo uses over at his excellent channel Rapid Tabletop, but not limited to just Necromunda. The city I imagined would be able to work with multiple settings, from Warhammer 40k to Fantasy, Warcry to Star Wars Legion, Middle Earth, and even D&D. I wanted to build a truly modular city that could change settings based on the way I decided to rebuild it. First, I decided on a structure of one foot square tiles. Each tile would be modular, so it would be able to combine and recombine with any other tile to create an infinite amount of layouts. For a while during this build, I planned on having the buildings attached to the tiles, but eventually I realized this was needlessly limiting the modular nature of the city. So instead, I would create a set of square, flat terrain tiles and then later, I could make several different sets of buildings to put on top of these tiles, or even use existing scatter terrain that I already had with this board. With the tiles that I owned, I calculated I could make roughly 6 1 foot by 1 foot cobblestone tiles, and 6 1 foot by 1 foot metal plating, or science fiction tiles. This week, I just focused on the cobblestone tiles, but the plan is to eventually build the metal tiles and have them all be interchangeable, but you know who's not interchangeable? This month's top patrons, including David Taylor, William Phillips, You Know Bacon, Nate Josue, Menace Cartel, and JT. Thank you so much for all of your support. I spent the next many, many hours figuring out the optimal build for each of the six tiles. I realized a bit of the way through that I didn't have quite enough for six fully cobblestone tiles, so I mixed in some of the specialist tiles to create the indication of a path that would wind through the city, as well as two L-shaped uh, section things that could be used as sidewalks or foundations of buildings. Once I was set on this configuration, I used plastic cement in all of the cracks to fuse the whole thing together into six permanent plates which lay more or less flat on the board. After letting the glue set overnight, I then used Viejo basing paste to add some additional dirt and texture to the board. 
hiding all of the sigils of black magic to show that I'm not copying Jeremy's idea, as well as just making the paths look a little bit more worn down and natural, rather than a board composed of perfect squares. While I wanted to add even more texture like rocks and bricks, I didn't want to limit what terrain I could place on these boards, so I decided for now to try and keep the texture fairly flat. To add even more variety and texture, I used a bit of super glue and regular sand to create even more variants in the texture of the board. After once again leaving the boards to dry overnight, I shook off the excess sand and primed everything in a matte black spray. After this, I spent far, far too long messing around with my airbrush to try to get a color scheme that I liked. And it, um, it didn't quite work out the way that I planned. So the next morning, I tried a completely different approach and used a sponge to apply several different brick-like colors to the cobblestones. I experimented quite a bit and eventually came up with a color scheme that I liked. So if you're going to try this at home, I recommend you do the following steps. Prime it in black, sponge on a heavy coat of hull red, and then sponge on varying amounts of the following colors to taste. I still felt like the colors were a little bit too varied. So remembering one of the best stone painting tutorials that I've ever found online, by the way, you should probably subscribe to Zorpa Zorp on YouTube. He's got a lot of useful videos you might like. I decided to apply an overall wash to the entire board to bring all of the colors together and make the whole thing look more consistent. Once this had dried, I felt like I had achieved the perfect Toronto Distillery District brick red that I was going for. But I didn't stop there. I felt like the boards were still missing a little something, so I then dry brushed on successive coats of the following colors to highlight the board just a little bit more. To fill in the gaps, I then built and painted several matching clips to hold the whole board together. Once the boards were done and all set up, I realized this color and texture looked awfully familiar. And I decided the board needed one more finishing touch. There, perfect. When I first set out to make this project, I assumed I would be able to build a whole city full of these buildings and tiles in a single week, but I was very, very wrong. While all I was able to accomplish this week was six cobblestone tiles, I feel like these are very good tiles. <laughs> which will work for a variety of settings and systems and serve as a good foundation of a modular set of terrain that I'll be able to use for years to come. Thank you so much for watching this week, and I hope you learned something or at least had some fun. As always, I like to extend a huge thanks to all of my generous supporters over on Patreon who are responsible for making all of this happen. What do you want to see next for this system? Buildings? More specialized tiles? raised platforms? Let me know down in the comments, and don't forget to like, subscribe, donate to your local animal shelter, and play Rage Shadow Legends today. And I'll see you in the next video.